All right, everybody in? Okay, well, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here for our third public outreach meeting on the Santa Paula Branch Line Rails with Trails Project. I'm Alex Puga, Senior Transportation Engineer and Project Manager for the City of Ventura. This is our second round of scheduled outreach meetings and we're excited to update you on our progress. If you missed our previous meetings, don't worry. They're recorded and available on our website at www.cityofventura.ca.gov forward slash SPBL. We truly appreciate your involvement in this transformative initiative and we look, for, we look forward to sharing what we've accomplished so far. Today's meeting will provide an update on the project status and highlight our progress since our last gathering. We have a lot of content to cover, and while we plan to use the full time allotted, we encourage you to submit your questions in the Q&A section. Although we won't be monitoring the Q&A live, we will compile all questions and send responses to everyone who, who registered. You can also find answers to many frequently asked questions on our website. Additionally, we would like to remind you about our upcoming in-person meeting on October 1st from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at Montalvo Elementary School. We hope to see you there. Today, I'm joined by many members of our dedicated team. As you may know, there is a lead agency for this project, which means it's responsible for the, for the design and eventual construction of the trail. On today's call from the city, we have myself, Derek Towers, Jeff Herford, and Alejandro Bell Alcazar. Join us from our partner agency, the Ventura County Transportation Commission, and owner of the rail is Amanda Fagan. We also have Commander Ryan Weeks from Ventura PD, Anitha Ballen, Gianfranco Lori, and Matthew Litvinas from, from the Ventura County Public Works, and Eric Bird, Brianne Dunn, and Tori Slinninger from Pacific Coast Sign Design. Finally, and not least, we have Adam Chase, our lead design consultant from Chan Ryan and Associates, who's here as well. Together, we have all committed to making this project a success and are excited to share our updates with you. And I'd like to hand it over to Brianne to continue with the, pre with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thanks everybody for being here tonight. We appreciate you taking your time out of your evening. Just a couple quick things, recapping what Alex has already said. Um, this is should be a capture of what it looks like on your bar. There is a chat, the chat has been disabled. Um, but we will be using it to um, provide links as we go through the presentation. So if you have any technical difficulties, you can't see the videos we're playing clearly, you can go ahead and see those on your own or you can copy and paste them for future use. Um, you can use the Q&A function and if there are any technical issues, we'll get back to you as quickly as possible so you can stay engaged in the conversation tonight. And this meeting is being recorded. I'm not sure when y'all logged in if it notified you of that, but the meeting is being recorded this evening. So tonight we're going to talk about the Santa Paula branch line. Um, so the overall Santa Paula branch line, Amanda's gonna um, share some information about that. Background about this project, project design. We've got some really exciting uh, design development to share with you this evening. Trail safety, and then the next steps for the project, including other outreach opportunities. So this project is funded by Caltrans ATP Cycle 6 Active Transportation Funding. It's a grant um, that is paying for the design portion, so the current um, professional services and development of the construction documentation that we're in now. The CTC, or the California Transportation Commission, is um, funding all of the construction of the trail. There is no city cost to this project, so no city match needed, and it's completely grant funded. This project is approximately 4.2 miles in length, um, coming from Montavo on the west side of the trail at the Metrolink Trailhead, and re eventually reaching Sadequay at the Sadequay Depot. Um, this is um, encompassed by three neighborhood areas that we're targeting both in engagement and treating as its own special neighborhood context, including Montavo, East End, and Sadequay. And now we're going to play a little bit of a, a little video that is going to show you the context of the trail with a nice flyover and some of the baseline information about the project. Sorry.
there's meant to be some fun music behind the video, but I don't think it's coming through. I can't hear it on my side. Um, but essentially, we're just taking you through the history of what the overall trail, the overall Santa Paula branch line encompasses, and the portion of the trail that this project will be built within. The yellow portion is the four miles that I just spoke of with the West Trail Hub being the Metrolink station and the East, the Sadequay Depot station. And now we're gonna fly over with some of the key intersections highlighted that we'll also be showing you renderings of this evening. The yellow line is showing the alignment of where the trail is going to be on either side of the railroad. Flying over Bristol Drive, there's a Montgomery Avenue crossing. There'll be some upgrades there. North Bank, got quite a few amenities at that location. South Pettit, South Sadekoy. And there's an existing linear park that we're connecting to that will then um, reach Wells Road and cross over into Sadekoy and Ventura County Public Works are gonna be talking a little bit tonight about how that's gonna connect up, connect up to some of their improvements and eventually reach the terminus of the Sadequay Depot. It's a flyover looking back towards the ocean. Thank you, Eric. Then I'm just gonna share a little bit of background about the project in general. Um, this project was adopted as a high priority project out of the active transportation plan that, that was just finalized recently. You can find more information about that plan on the city of Ventura's website, cityofventura.ca.gov backslash ATP. Again, we're gonna be putting some of these links in the chat if you wanna learn more. There were several reasons why this was a high priority project. This project is serving, um, filling some critical gaps in transportation, especially the Wells um, intersection that right now um, bisects pretty unsafely between um, Sadequay and Ventura. So that was a huge component of this, creating safer routes to jobs, schools, um, and different recreation destinations. We want to connect, connect to existing networks. So there's several bike trails and um, pedestrian amenities throughout the community that are somewhat disjointed right now. So this trail will serve a nice connection to those. We're going to reduce vehicle miles traveled by providing a safe non-vehicular corridor to some of these locations. Again, the community benefit destinations that will be reaching safer without a car and in general, improve recreation and providing more trails. This was a big piece that came out of the outreach of the city's active transportation project. And so we heard you and this is why this is being prioritized. So as you see, these are overall project milestones. Um, we were awarded the project in July of 2023 or the funding for the project in July of 2023 through that grant funding that I already spoke about. The project was kicked off by the design team with the city in winter of last year. We have completed phase one of our community outreach and what we're calling early design and we are now in mid design. So we're gonna be showing you the product of the 30% design documents that we have thus far this evening. And then after this fall, late 2024, early 2025, just a smidge, um, we'll be in in design with going to uh, the city council in spring of next year to get approval for 100% design when then it will go out to bid to the contractor um, for the, the actual constructor of the project and eventually construction needs to be completed per the funding guidelines by the end of 2026. The project elements that were included in the grant awarded application, which need to be a part of this for the project to be funded include the four plus miles of class one and class four multimodal um, improvements traffic signals, solar lights, so the trail will be illuminated, bike and pedestrian bridges, shade trees, trash cans, benches, 
trail kiosks. So think of like signage, wayfinding, things like that, where, you know, folks can get off their bikes and have a little shade. Bike repair stations, at least an exercise station, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that tonight. There's multiple opportunities for that and places to fill up your water bottles. So now I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Amanda Fagan with Ventura County Transportation Commission. Thanks, Brianne, and thank you to everyone who's joined us this evening for the webinar. Um, my name is Amanda Fagan, and I serve as the Director of Planning and Sustainability for the Ventura County Transportation Commission. Um, the Santa Paula Branch Line Railroad is an important piece of the history of Ventura County, built in the 1880s to serve the expanding agricultural industry and growing towns of the Santa Clara River Valley. The line once served as the primary connection between San Francisco and Los Angeles before the Union Pacific line that now extends through the San Fernando Valley was constructed. Next slide, please. Uh, one back, sorry. <laughs> um, I will use the term right of way when talking about the Santa Paula branch line. This term refers to a dedicated linear corridor that's used for transportation infrastructure, such as roads, railroads, and trails. The Santa Paula branch line right of way consists of 99 parcels that are typically 100 feet wide, ranging from about 30 feet to 200 feet wide in some parts, and extending from the East Ventura Montalvo Metrolink station through the unincorporated uh, community of Piru. In all, the Santa Paula branch line right of way is 32 miles long and includes 29 miles of serviceable track through the Santa Clara River Valley and along the State Route 126 corridor. The focus of today's session, of course, is the city of Ventura's project, um, the four mile section from Montalvo to Satakoy. The Ventura County Transportation Commission acquired the Santa Paula Branch Line Railroad and right of way in 1995 for use as a multimodal corridor that includes a trail, freight, and preservation of the corridor for possible future com commuter rail service. Today, the Santa Paula Branch Line remains an active railroad with a variety of rail operations and other uses in pursuit of the Commission's original vision of a multimodal corridor. In 2000, VCTC adopted the Santa Paula Branch Line Recreational Trail Master Plan and certified an environmental impact report. The plan includes design guidelines, preliminary engineering, and a preferred trail alignment. In 2022, the commission adopted a goal to reinvigorate the process to complete the Santa Paula Branch Line bike trail. The Santa Paula Branch Line Corridor presents an opportunity to build an active transportation route that is safer than many of the alternative routes along an existing publicly owned right of way that was acquired for use as a multimodal corridor. A rails with trails approach facilitates the use of clean transportation alternatives and improves connectivity with transit which fosters transit ridership recovery through first and last mile solutions. Taking a rails with trails approach has many benefits. VCTC estimates that the Santa Paula Branch Line Trail at full build out will reduce vehicle miles traveled by 23,000 to 46,000 daily vehicle miles traveled. And we estimate 300 to 500 bike trips to occur daily on the trail. The trail is estimated to have between $2 million and $7 million annual economic benefit and significantly reduce bike and pedestrian crashes within the corridor. Three sections of the Santa Paula Branch Line trail system have been completed within the cities of Santa Paula, Fillmore, and unincorporated Piru community. Concurrent with the City of Ventura's efforts, the City of Santa Paula has also received grant funding to extend and improve its trail section. And VCTC also has plans to update the trail master plan from Satakoy to Piru to validate trail alignment, connections, and amenities, 
and update existing conditions to facilitate trail completion with extensive stakeholder engagement. Completed trail sections are shown in the photos on the right of the slide, demonstrating some of the trail, oh, I'm sorry, uh, next slide. <laughs> um, the completed trail sections are shown in the photos um, on the, to the right of this slide, demonstrating some of the trail amenities and treatments that have been used to date. In addition, the Sunburst rail bikes operate guided tours on rail mounted motor assisted rail bikes between the Santa Paula Depot in downtown Santa Paula and Largo Lane west of Fillmore. So for more information about the Santa Paula Branch Line history, safety, and other aspects, please visit our website at goventura.org slash SPBL. And with that context in mind, I'll turn the, the table back over to Eric. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, everybody. Um, we're going to dive into a little section about the design here. Um, but first, I just wanted to remind people that um, if you have any technical questions or anything, feel free to leave them in the Q&A. We know the chat is disabled, but we're trying to still provide links to any resources that we're doing in the chat. Um, we will get back to your answers after the presentation. We, um, with your registration, came an email address. So expect, um, if it, hopefully, if the, if the content answers some of the questions that you have. Um, and and uh, But if not, we will be reaching out to you individually um, after the presentation. So um, with that, I'm actually going to transition off the PowerPoint. So give me just a second here because I'm gonna take us through another video showcasing some of the design um, for the trail. And it was easier to do this um, through a YouTube link that will be put in the chat. So if you need to follow along, you can do so as well. Um, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started here. Um, this also has music that I realize you probably can't hear, so I'm gonna turn it off um, as we go, but uh, I, I can hear it. Um, we're gonna start by zooming in on the Western edge here, what we're calling kind of the Western terminus or trailhead at the Ventura Metrolink station. Um, this is the um, East Ventura Metrolink station, but it is the Western terminus of the Santa Paula Branch Line Trail. Um, you can see here the kind of roundabout issue that is actually within the, the uh, um, the Metrolink station there at the end of Peacock Drive. The project will connect to the Metrolink station via um, some new sidewalk improvements and class three bicycle improvements between Peacock and Bunting Avenue to the east. Um, the, the design team and city have looked at several alternatives for this connection and are still weighing alternatives. This particular alternative, this one block, does its best to protect as many existing trees and existing parking on Nightingale Street. Um, here at Bunting is the first kind of considerable improvement and what we're calling the West Trailhead for the project. Um, here you can see how um, the, the trailhead will punch through the existing block wall into the railroad right of way and provide an amenity for the neighborhood residents to access the trailhead. Um, these res these re renderings show the existing and proposed conditions at this. Here at the trailhead, we will be looking at amenities like a trailhead gateway, monument signage, benches, drinking fountain, bike racks. We'll be discussing more about the specific trail amenities later. Um, and the, as I mentioned, provides um, essential access here at the Western portion of the trail. As we move on in the rendering, we're gonna be moving from West to East. So we're starting here at Bunting. You're, as we go through these interstitial areas, I'll kind of pause here. It's a little jittery, I apologize, um, but you're seeing a few key things along here. You're seeing um, the tra trail location and proximity to the rail line. Um, the interstitial areas will always be accompanied by a fence between the rail and the trail, as well as um, stormwater conveyance is a big issue here that kind of represented by the darker green and then clusters of trees. These little white represent solar lighting, which is another critical feature of the trail. As we head east, we get to our first big and major intersection at Johnson Road, and here you can see some of the traffic improvements. We'll be talking more about the safety improvements of the traffic intersections later, um, but here's a showcase of what that will look like. Um, here at Johnson, the trail crosses the railroad tracks to the north. When it gets to the east side of Johnson, the trail will cross to the south side, and that's really to queue up crossing of the Harmon Barranca just to the east here, which we'll show in a second. Here you can see some of these improvements. This will be a pre-signalized intersection um, with new signals that are coordinated with the rail. As we move further east, again, some of these interstitials, we're gonna get to our first major stream crossing. 
um, here at Harmon Barranca, the trail will intersect with the existing Harmon Barranca Trail located here and provide an 80 foot span of a new bridge across the Harmon Barranca. We provided a few renderings um, and we're gonna have a survey going out after this meeting. Um, as part of that survey and our engagement next week, we're asking you for some input. We have a couple different bridge options. They seem minor, but kind of cool. Do you like an arch bridge or a flat bridge? As we head further east, this next section is the primary section where agriculture is directly adjacent to the trail, which poses some um, constraints. In this section, the trail has various grading constraints as well. So you're going to see in this section, this, this um, kind of uh, engineered section, we will have various opportunities or, or constraints that require a retaining wall and or um, fence, a taller fence between the trail and the neighboring adjacent um, agricultural properties. You'll also notice in this section that there aren't any trees. And that is because we have worked closely with our agricultural stakeholders and realized that trees in this section could pose potential risks to future agricultural activity in this area. As we get to the Bristol crossing, Bristol's tricky crossing, I'm sure many of you are aware of this specific area. This intersection was specifically designed where it's located for the ideal safety configuration. And as we look at this, a new Hawk signal, um, similar to the one located now, just up Bristol Drive, actually back in the back of this image is where the new Hawk symbol signal is. If you're interested in more information on Hawk signals, the city has a new, a great new video and lots of resources on their website about Hawk signals. Um, here you can see the proposed intersection is designed ideally for safety to provide the most visibility for trail users and crossers at this kind of difficult angled intersection here. As we head further east, the trail stays to the south of the rail line now, um, offering ideal access from Bristol Drive, opportunities for more trees that, to the south that will help shade the trail. Um, and ideally for a crossing upcoming here at uh, Montgomery, which will work with the existing signal set system at Montgomery. Heading further east along North Bank Drive now, we reach our midway point in the trail. It's a midway, well, not quite a trailhead, but it's a midway opportunity point. And I think this is best kind of shown in the existing condition image here, which shows the existing at grade crossing um, kind of switchback ramp stair combination that's here now, providing access to residents to the south in the North Bank neighborhood to Unipero Serra Elementary and Park to the north. It's kind of a critical intersection for pedestrian um, and active transportation use, which is why at this location, you're gonna see significant amenities as Brianne kind of alluded to earlier, an opportunity here for exercise stations, more benches, seating, um, drinking fountains and considerable stormwater improvements. As we head further east, we enter the projects section, which is bounded both by residential along the south side of the trail and the north side of the trail. Before we get to Pettit, the rail will still be on, or the trail will be, still be on the south side of the rail. As we cross Pettit, the trail is gonna to flip to the north. And this is largely because for several reasons, um, the residences, properties to the south, the, the grading configuration is that they are considerably lower than the trail. Um, so moving the trail to the north provides best for visibility um, issues, as well as the, as you can kind of see in this existing image, the grading along the trail in this area varies significantly. So the trail has to follow. Here you can see the residences to the south, which sit well below the trail. So keeping the trail further away from those residences was a primary consideration. In the proposed renderings that are shown here, oops, apologies, that are shown here, um, you can see this is one of the few areas where the trail lighting is moved opposite from the rail line. Um, and that's largely because of the grading configurations where a retaining wall will largely be needed between the, tra the, the trail and the rail with a railing on top of it. Um, this is to mitigate some of those extreme grade differentiations that exist in this segment. In addition, you can see how the lighting in this section will, will um, be constrained to the trail. And this is largely done through very specifically designed lighting devices that will minimize light output or distribution off of the trail. We'll see these renderings again, this rendering specifically again in a little bit. Heading further east, the trail will get to the crossing. This is a long section here where residential properties, you can see the kind of clustered tree approach, really trying to maintain open sight lines through this section as we get to the Pettit Crossing 
um, which is a, another kind of minor crossing that will be controlled by an RRFB, allowing for trail crossing at Pettit. East of Pettit, the trail stays on the north side, again, for a lot of the same considerations, but primarily because the trail is going to transfer to the existing city's linear park trail, which is right here, a little transfer over to this linear park, an existing trail that will be rehabilitated as part of this project. Um, that follows the, this is, if you're familiar with this area over here is the construction of the new veterans housing project that is now pretty much complete. Um, and on the right is the Brown Barranca. This existing trail provides ideal access as Brianne alluded to earlier to Wells Road, which is really the, the prime opportunity to cross the difficult difficulties of Wells. Um, so at Wells, you can see some new additions here. This probably looks very confusing and very, um, there's a lot going on here. So in the south, we have a two-way cycle track separated. If you're familiar with the new improvements on Bristol, there's two-way cycle track here in Ventura on Bristol. We'll see pictures of that later, as well as uh, a transition onto the east side. As we move east, this is the county storm drain um, improvements. So what this will look like here so here's the existing, this is actually the existing linear park trail that will dump out into wells, provide the crossing, and line up with the storm drain improvements. Heading further east, now we're in um, county jurisdiction within Satakoy. Um, we cross over to right at the right here. This is actually Satakoy Park. And along this storm drain easement, easement trail construction, fairly straightforward, railings, lights. From, from this location, we head down Alalia Avenue using an on-street network to get to the ultimate terminus of the trail, which will be the Satakoy Depot, which provides oppor opportunity for future trailhead improvements um, and potential public art opportunities here at this intersection. I'm going to zoom out to provide a little bit more context. I think this this uh, the next piece I'm going to transition over here to, to Captain um, Commander Weeks to dis discuss the trail safety. So I'm going to get back to the presentation here, Commander, and I will let you take it away. Eric, sorry to interrupt. This is um, Ventura County Public Works is actually going to talk a oh, little yeah, bit so I'm, about I'm sorry. the Satakoy improvements. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Yes. So our project um, does intersect with some ongoing um, or another project that the County of Ventura is undergoing, um, also an ATP funded project. However, they're at a little bit of a different phase in their project than we are. Um, the reason why our project bleeds over into Satakoy, which is technically Ventura County lands, is Satakoy um, is located within the city of Ventura's sphere of influence. So there's a lot of sharing of resources and also wanting to connect Satakoy to the resources that the city has. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and, and pass it over to the County of Ventura's Public Works Department. Matt? Thanks, Brian. Um, next slide, please. So I'm Matt Levinis from the County of Ventura Public Works. Um, as already mentioned, we also received some uh, ATP Cycle 6 grant uh, to perform some uh, bike path and pedestrian improvements in the Sadco area. Uh, product scope it includes some minor road widening, some bike paths, sidewalks, access ramps, and driveway tie-ins and also some high visibility crosswalks at some of the intersections. Uh, we received a state grant of about $3.5 million and the estimated cost for our project is about eight and a half million dollars. Um, our tentative schedule, we're planning to have our preliminary plans designed by the fall of next year. And our final plans completed by the spring of 27 with construction to start in fall of 27. Next slide. And we had here's a few images of our conceptual plan. Uh, so we had a, our conceptual class one bike path going across the, the storm uh, channel in the easement. That's going to tie in, be a 12 foot bike path with uh, two foot shoulders, and then have the pedestrian stairs and switchback ramp uh, as shown earlier. Um, then we're going to have the bike path, it'll transition into Elalia Avenue with a bike route going down the street. So with that, we're gonna have some six to 10 foot sidewalks running along the, in the county's road right away. 
I'm going to provide some bulb outs that will help to improve safety for anybody crossing the street and, to, and so that drivers can see them as well. And at a few intersections, we're also going to add some RRFBs. That's what I have here, and I'm going to pass it off now to Tori Slinger from PCLD to talk about design amenities and safety treatments. Thank you so much, Matthew. Um, Eric, I don't think it'll be an issue, but do you mind muting since we're in the same room? Um, all right, um, we're now going to review some of the more detailed elements of the project design. Starting off with amenities, we have identified um, to enhance safety and trail experience. They include bike racks, benches, exercise stations, water refill stations, trash cans, you fix it you fix it stations and solar lighting. Um, please keep in mind these images are intended to be informational only as actual amenity style is a voting opportunity for the community. Um, we have compiled three different styles for amenities that the public can vote on both in our online survey and at our next in-person meeting. Um, Alejandro just dropped the link in the chat for the survey. Um, the first railroad style is hard-lined and slightly artistic. It's a combination of core 10 and wood inspired by the local, uh, the location of the trail. And as Amanda mentioned earlier, um, other rails with trails projects. Our concrete amenities um, are the most durable option and have a minimalistic and modern style. And the metal amenity options are the closest to the current city of interest standards and the most utilitarian option. Additionally, um, we have identified a potential location along the trail at North Bank. Um, Eric paused there in his video for a moment um, for exercise equipment. The following options for voting in the online survey and in-person meeting. We have a two-person static combo installation that allows for two users um, to use the equipment in a variety of ways and work the chest, shoulders, upper and mid abs, forearms, and triceps. The lat pull-down and vertical press allow for two users to work shoulder, arm, chest, and back muscle groups at the same time. Um, the plyometric steps are a versatile piece of equipment that can be used for box jumps, step-ups, decline push-ups and tricep dips, as well as balance and stability exercises. And lastly, we have the leg press, which allows two users to be doing the same exercise, focusing on leg strength um, at the end, each end of the equipment. Um, we would also like to include a larger trail gateway, gateway sign, as mentioned, at the Metrolink trailhead. Um, and this will also be a voting element within the survey. Um, materials and forms for this include a stone pillar option that would have um, a lot of visual weight to it, a more streamlined steel sign that would probably be vertically oriented, a wooden or steel overhead structure that could easily be seen from further away and create a threshold upon entering the trail, and a lower horizontal precast concrete sign. Um, now diving into some specific trail safety elements. Go the next slide. Yep. Yeah. We took a holistic approach to project safety that include both design and long-term strategies. Design strategies and trail safety elements will work in conjunction with long-term efforts of policy and law enforcement. Next slide. Um, design strategies for safety along the trail include open clear sight lines, security or emergency call boxes, emergency vehicle access at key locations, separation of the trail from the rail, including both dis distance and physical barriers, um, crossing treatments, lighting, and CCTV cameras. Um, some of these were shown before, but here we have three typical sections taken at various points along the trail. Um, we've used a variety of design elements to increase user safety, including a 12 and a half foot minimum offset from the rail, a 12 foot ride trail itself with two foot shoulders on either side, solar lights and railings and fences are utilized where needed. At Johnson Drive, there'll be a pre-signal, which is a standard traffic signal with green, yellow and red ball lights on an overhead mast arm. Lighting will control the pedestrian and bicycle crossings at Johnson. At Bristol, there will be a pedestrian hybrid beacon also known as a hawk. The lights on the hawk signal, uh, the lights on the hawk signal change colors and modes to warn traffic of pedestrian and bike crossings. And Alejandra might be dropping that link in again for the city um, with their YouTube video regarding the 
hawks that are currently deployed in the city. Um, at Pedag and Satakoi crossings, there'll be RRFBs or rectangular rapidly flashing beacons like the existing installation shown here on Ralston. And at the wells and telephone intersections, we'll deploy a two-way cycle track with bicycle signals on the south side of the intersection across wells. Um, the solar lights that have been mentioned along the trail will be located at 125 feet on center with 14 foot poles. The solar panel itself acts as a photocell and sends a signal to the power center to turn on the light when it is no longer receiving sunlight. And finally, this is the night rendering again, um, a conceptual nighttime rendering of the trail. This is a section between Pettit and Satakoi. The lights aim to illuminate only the trail and the immediate surrounding area and will not cast light into adjacent properties. And now I'm going to let Commander Weeks uh, talk a little bit more about safety. Thank you. So one of our greatest tools for providing safety for the trail will be our closed circuit television cameras. So what are they? Um, they are city-owned cameras that we have immediate access to. We have live feeds that go into our dispatch center as well as to our watch commander office. Um, we see it, if we can go back one, uh, that previous slide, that is the actual uh, that's a picture of our watch commander office. Um, we have several dozen cameras currently um, in use throughout the city right now. The important thing to note is that no one is monitoring these cameras 24 7. In other words, no one is sitting watching all of these cameras. They are simply camera feeds that we have access to. So oftentimes what will happen is a call comes in in a certain area where our dispatchers know there is a camera. They can access that camera, pull it up onto the large screen and get real time information. It's a great tool. Uh, on the left, you see these are not necessarily what the cameras will look like on the trail. Um, like we show on concept design, but these are just a few of the examples that we have throughout the city right now. You'll see the, uh, the black polar camera. On the right is a picture that's a very important picture. I know that uh, privacy will be a big concern for the use of closed circuit TV cameras. Um, this is a light, this is a picture of one of our newest cameras. At to orient you, there's a gentleman walking on the promenade in Ventura. Above him is the beach, and then below him are the uh, condo that Paseo acquired. This is a fixed camera, and you'll see that on the right, uh, there is a big black locked out area. That is an area where balconies are seen. So we are actually able to go into our software program and block those areas out so that you cannot see private areas. And in addition to the ability to block out private areas, our policy actually prohibits folks from looking into areas where people can help. Um, safety and enforcement, a couple of things that we'll be doing when we trail those live, what we can do is schedule what we call focus control. So in other words, what we would do is our dispatch center, the dispatch officers, two different locations in the bike trail system. And uh, even though there is not technically a call for service, the officers will be sent there to the phone after. Um, obviously, I already talked about our camera monitoring system that we have access. And then we just really encourage people to report any kind of suspicious more than you know. If you have an emergency, obviously, please call 911. If you're uncomfortable calling 911 and you're not sure if it's an emergency, you can also call our 24 7 non emergency number, which is on the screen here. It's little five, six, five, zero. It'll actually go into the same exact place that you're 911. And then you can just please report any specific suspicious activity. Um, the sooner we can get on top of it. I don't know if you want to handle it. We can talk about the city policy. Thanks, Commander Weeks. Hi, everybody. My name is Alejandra, and I'm with the Communications Office with the City of Ventura. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes sharing some key resources and policies aimed at enhancing public safety 
addressing community needs and overall city services. So we have here, how do we report crime and how do we access resources? First, it's important to know that when it comes to non-emergencies, we have available resources beyond calling our law enforcement. The county and the city have resources like backpack medicine. This is through the county. And this is a team that provides medical, mental health, and social service support to those in need, often without requiring police intervention. So this is a part of a broad approach to address concerns and assess escalation to law enforcement when possible. Um, again, our non-emergency numbers listed on our chat, consider using um, our community resources whenever possible to address concerns before escalating. So I'd like to talk about railroad safety and trespassing. Public safety around railroad tracks is also critical to us. And we know from our last meeting, we received some questions about this. So railroad tracks and rights of way are private property and entering them without permission uh, is considered trespassing. So to report on safe activity, you can contact Sierra Northern Railway and we can post the number here. And then also VCTC has a trespassing policy <clears throat> to ensure public safety. So um, VCTC managed areas like the railroad corridor and rights of way. And if anybody's found on these properties without permission, they will be asked to leave voluntarily. And if they refuse, law enforcement may be involved. Um, we also have a lot of resources to support folks that are experiencing homelessness. So for those experiencing homelessness, we have services available like 211. That's a go-to number for information on homelessness, um, on homeless shelters, and people can call that number below. Oh, that's also on our on our PowerPoint and email for any assistance. And then um, I'd like to introduce you guys to a new, really neat product that we uh, have with the city of Ventura. It's called Ventura Connects. And this is a digital solution for all city requests. So um, this is easy to use on your mobile platforms and it allows residents to report things like potholes, graffiti, maintenance requests, and is uh, geotagged. So this allows for a lot of accuracy when you send your request. This app is available on Apple and Google Play. You can submit requests anonymously or create a free account to track progress and see any other reported issues. Um, I also like to point out that if it's not for emergencies like water main breaks or crimes in progress, for those situ situations, please always call 911. If you have an issue that isn't covered in the app, you can reach out to city services. So to, to end my section, our focus is really on providing the right resources for the right situations, whether it's through Ventura Connects, um, alternative resources shared in this presentation, or with our work with uh, law enforcement. So thank you and please reach out with any questions. Thank you, Alejandra. Um, we are going to share an email um, address that you guys can send messages to with questions or concerns or, you know, if you want additional information about something that wasn't provided in the chat. And that's a chat that or that's an email that is monitored by folks from the city's transportation team, Alejandra, and also people from the PCLD team. So if there are questions about any of the slides and the resources that she just shared, you can also reach out to us that way and we can get back to you. Um, with those questions. All right, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our public outreach plan and what's up ahead and how you can stay involved in the project. So I mentioned earlier with our overall timeline that we're in this like critical stage where you know we just started back in May engaging, but this is a really fast track project. Like you folks might hear, oh, the project's not gonna be end or opening until end of 2026. That's actually like really, really fast for a project of this magnitude. So we have to um, you know, talk, collaborate stay in touch as much as possible until the end of this year, early next year. So then when we take this project to city council, it's something that we all feel really good about um, in these collaborative solutions. There are many ways you can stay engaged with us. Um, those of you that are viewing this like on a laptop or a computer, you can actually just scan that QR code right now and it'll take you to our project website. 
Um, there you'll find information about our upcoming meetings. There's the links that we're sharing in the chat tonight, like the link to the survey. Um, a lot of this like key information that we're talking about, like background information, project FAQ. So those of you that have some questions, those answers might already be on the website. It's a really great hub um, to get information about the project. Tonight, we're excited to be launching a um, GIS story map that's about the project. And so there's now a link on the city's website that'll take you to the story map. And the story map um, is a resource that we're using to provide real-time updates on the project. And so um, net, right now, you can view our previous presentation and recordings of those presentations through the story map, as well as a plethora of other resources like the VCTC trespass policy, and some other key documents. So it's a, it's a good one to bookmark and check back on. Next slide. So we are essentially in the middle of our public meetings um, for the all phases of the project. We're in the phase two. Um, we have already reached uh, Montavo Community Council, um, East End Community Council, and the Sadaquay Mac, the municipal Municipal Advisory Committee. We will be returning to those. So we've got three more uh, meetings across those three different councils coming up towards the end of this year. This is our third general public meeting. So after tonight, we have the in-person meeting next week on Tuesday night, and then we'll have a, another virtual and in-person meeting. And then we are also um, working with a great group of local stakeholders. Um, these are groups from, uh, or these are representatives from bike groups like Bike Ventura, Channel Islands Bike Club, folks from the community councils, um, folks from local PTOs, PTAs, and they're helping give us some um, key insights on, you know, what our key community benefit groups want out of the project. So that that is also ongoing. And so for each phase of the project, we wanted to hit each of our key neighborhoods. So for phase one, our in-person meeting was um, in Sadaquay at the Jose Flores Center. Again, the recording of that meeting is on the project website. Um, next week, our meeting will be at Montavo Elementary School. Um, we definitely wanted to engage closely with the community about the Metrolink Trailhead. It's very close to the school. Um, and then for the third phase, we'll be hosting the meeting on the East End. All of the meetings um, are general content about the project overall. They're not specific to the location. So please, if you live in Sadaquoy, um, come to the Montavo meeting. Um, if you live on the East End, come to the Montavo meeting and vice versa. Um, it's, re it's a really great opportunity also for us to connect with our um, cross-city communities and learn more about um, our, our different needs and our similar needs. Yeah, this is just, we've got the recording up um, on our project website. We had that one similarly online as to tonight. Um, this is just some photos from our meeting in person at the Jose Flores Center on May 21st. And our meeting that's coming up here next Tuesday, we're going to have something very similar where we have the overall strip map, you know, four miles of trail is a lot of trail. And so we've created this really cool 20 foot long map where you can walk up if you live near the trail, you'll probably be able to make out, you know, where your house is in relation to it. Um, everybody that's panelists on tonight's meeting will be at the in-person meeting. So if you have specific questions about some of the content that one of us covered, you can have those one-on-one um, -on -one conversations and we can answer um, your questions as best as possible. You know, we wanna hear from you. We want these um, project solutions to be solutions that work for you um, and yeah, address your needs and concerns. So again, that's the flyer for our meeting. Um, as you can see, we're really excited to get you there in person. So the meeting will be from 6 to 7.30. And if you know folks in the community or have family members or friends that might need translation and interpretation services, those will be provided. So our presentation that you're seeing here tonight will be provided, um, translated, and all of our resources um, that will be posted at the meeting will also be translated. Um, and we'll have an interpreter on site and um, you can fill out our project survey. So all of the things that are happening next week in person on Tuesday are also being replicated in the survey. We would love to have you in person because there's obviously a lot of great conversation and things we can learn about your needs and ideas about the project if you're there for those conversations. However, if you can't make it, we still really wanna hear from you. 
Um, we want to know the priorities and the preferences that you have for the project. There's also a place where you can um, write in any like questions or comments. So just like what you're putting in the Q&A tonight, if there's something specific that you want to give us feedback on, um, that's a, another great place to put it. The survey will close in about three and a half weeks. So we're just launching it tonight. Um, but again, because of that critical design period that we have, we want to make sure um, to get all this feedback in so then we can use it for the next stage um, of design and, and yeah, get it all in there. So again, here's our project email, atp at cityadventura.ca.gov. Reach out to us, project website, go check it out. Lots of great stuff on there. And it was a pleasure having you all here tonight. Thanks again for spending your Wednesday night with us. And I don't know if you have any closing remarks, Alex, um, but yeah, on behalf of the design team, thank you very much. Yeah, just wanted to extend, you know, a, a big thank you to everybody who attended. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, hear us out, uh, give your input, and yeah, we look forward to seeing you guys on October 1st. Thank you. And those of you that Hopefully left your questions night. in the Q&A, we'll, we'll be getting back to you. Thank you very much. Everybody have a wonderful evening. Bye, everyone.